One of the other questions that really changed the trajectory of my life was asking myself, what would I do if money didn't matter? I told you I, I grew up really poor. And then my dad became a very successful eye surgeon. And so I lived on both sides of the fence. But no matter where we were at, money was always like something that was always talked about and arguments over. It was always talk about money. So I'd never thought, what would I do if money didn't matter? That concept seemed very foreign to me. But I decided one day, I'd met a girl, and, and you know, it's amazing what girls can do to you. And so I asked myself, what would I do if money didn't matter, kind of because of that girl. And for the first time, I realized that I wouldn't chase after money. That didn't make sense to chase after money. So I said, I think what I would do if money didn't matter is I would actually, you know, help people and serve people. And, and so it was after asking myself that question that I chose to pass on scholarships to law school and move across the country and live in a homeless shelter for six months. So I lived in a homeless shelter for six months and served people. And then from there I moved into the closet of a gym. I lived in the closet of a gym for nine months. While I was living in the closet of the gym, I got really frustrated because I could handle living in the closet of a gym and that was an intentional sacrifice. I could have lived in my family's home in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I could have lived in a condo on the number two beach in the world. But I knew that I had big dreams. And I knew that going and living in a comfortable situation wasn't going to help me become the type of person that I wanted to become. So I was willing to sacrifice, but I was really frustrated because I was like, God, why do I only have three athletes that I'm working with? I could help Tiger Woods, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michelle Wee, you name it. I know I can help them. Once again, optimistically delusional. And I yelled out at God one day. I said, why do I only have three athletes that I'm working with? I could help those people. I could help the best in the world. And I've never felt something so strongly in my heart. As he said, until you value those three athletes the same way you would Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James, you will never work with that caliber of an athlete. And I started to change the way I valued what was right in front of me. Your class might feel stupid. And you might be learning somewhat irrelevant information. The same way that when I'm working with a 10-year-old, they may never play in the NBA. They may, never, they may never play in the MLS, but it's not about that. It's about training them. It's about valuing that opportunity and treating them as if it was the biggest opportunity in the world. So my challenge to you is, what if you started to view your classes, your practice, your relationships, as if they were that dream job, that dream relationship, that dream opportunity? Because there's a principle that exists in our world. It's a truth. Until you value the small stuff, until you're faithful with the small stuff, you're not going to get the big stuff. It doesn't work that way. And so I started to value each one of those kids. I was actually here in Missouri, working with Missouri women's basketball, uh, probably about a year and a half after that. And that, at that time, that was going to be the biggest workshop that I'd done. I was getting paid more money I'd ever gotten paid in my life. I was a little bit hesitant as to whether I actually deserved what I was getting paid, whether I was a fake and a fraud. I didn't have a sports psychology degree. All of these thoughts were going through my head. And then two people called me that night, the night before I was supposed to give my presentation to the team and work with the coaches. I hadn't finished my final preparations and it was already 11.30 at night. And one of my clients called 
who wasn't a big client, he was, happened to be my best friend as well, but he called. And there was a part of me that wanted to say, dude, don't you know that I'm busy? Don't you know that I have a really big opportunity in front of me? I don't have time for you right now. And then one of my interns texted me, and at the time she was playing basketball at Pepperdine. And she said, hey, I really need to talk to you. And once again, I was like, do you guys not understand? Like, I have big opportunities in front of me right now. Like, you're little opportunities. Just let me focus on what I need to focus on, these big opportunities. But then I thought about it, and I said, if LeBron James texted me and said I really need to talk to you, would I call him back? If Kobe Bryant called and said, hey, I need to talk to you, would I spend as much time on the phone with him as they needed? So I spent about an hour on the phone with both of them. I didn't start preparing until 1.30 in the morning. I was supposed to be there at 8. But I realized that I, I had to value them that same way. And I couldn't just say, oh, well, I have bigger things to do now. No, I had to, I had to keep valuing them. And I've watched in my life I call that day that I had that conversation with God the day that everything changed for me. The day that I started to value every single person and every opportunity in that same way, everything changed in my life. It didn't change overnight. And I'm not sitting here and going to tell you that everything is going to change in your life overnight. But I can tell you that if you become consistent in valuing your opportunities, you will be amazed at how the trajectory of your life changes.